Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turnwright Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is Boat Works Part 6. Before we get going with the video, though, I have an announcement to make. The other day in the mail, I just received my silver play button. And this is every bit of you as it is me. I, I didn't plan my channel to turn into this, but with your help, it has. You know, I, I read the comments... And it, it, it keeps me from going too far this way or too far that way. But it seems to be going in a pretty good direction. And I got to say thank you very much for helping me get there. Um, those of you that are just coming aboard, I have 650-something videos online right now. So there's plenty to watch if you're waiting for the next one. Scroll through them. I have a lot in my video um, uh, series um library there i am nearing i think 36 million views and social blade grades my channel at a b minus <laughs> this is about what i held in 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 high school there uh, all my shop classes were a's and my english and history were failing and i had to go to summer school uh th just a a little rememory and uh it, but um you know, it, it, it put me in the career that I am very happy to be in. And I wake up every morning ready to rock and roll. And not every day ends up being how you pictured it in the morning. But it's really a happy life. I, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm generating any interest into the machinist trade, that's goals accomplished. All right. Um... So anyhow, we'll see you at 1 million, right? All right, likes, subs, get her done. Okay, we're set up here on our very first billet. We got the bit upside down. We have a cardboard uh, dam here so the chips can fall onto it. Uh, we have five inches, 140 thousandths of an inch in diameter. So we have plenty of room to go. We're going to go ahead and touch off and we're going to take a hundred thousands off of this for a first pass. Okay, one hundred thousands right there. <clears throat>
uh, first side on this cut. Okay, we're all done with the OD on the uh, on the port side. We're going to put in the starboard side now. I had this five-inch piece of material, and I chucked it up so that that goes into the jaws. So I got the full length of the jaws connecting it. Got to dial in hard. And then I machined this register out here so that it receives the bearings. And then I can rough both of them off and then let them cool. Out, out of the machine and then put them back in here at cool down temperature for the finishing. I, I think I left about 12 thousands or so on there and I just finished miking up the hole there and we want this to be like 518, 517, 518 would be nice and we're at uh, 534 right now and we're, we're holding pretty true within a half a thousand it's staying Stay in there so it, within the tolerance that I'm gonna want at the end fit after it's pressed in um, I think we're, we're running true enough and that's why um, here again just like our jigs in the carriage and line boring that piece out here sticking this in here and cutting out here and putting leading the, the tool bit here we are able to cut a true and straight surface for the entire length of the part here all right so we're going to touch off and, and we're going to we're going to take this down to size and then after that we're going to kiss a, a little chamfer there a little chamfer here and then we're going to put in our uh, center cutting insert that we have uh, and we're going to just relieve it a half an inch 132nd per side in the middle for grease to go around and then it'll enter through multiple grease holes that we happen to put in it and then our final action will be to chuck up the bearing so we can forge jaw it right in the center and go in there with a, a boring tool and create the appropriate cylindrical ring in there for grease. All right. <clears throat> We're tight. I'm just taking five thousandths off of here to create a starting measurement. We're within a half a thousandth of running true. You can see that it's hardly fluctuating at all right there. Excellent. Okay, we're to size there, or the size that we chose to have. And now we can go ahead and pop off this tool holder. And first we're gonna we're gonna chamfer both of these here. And what I like to use is my DNM style tool bit, and they're mounted in here, so I can go ahead and 
and put that one in and do this angle or this end. And I'm just looking for like a sixteenth of an inch. Just a tote, a skosh more. Okay. Now we pull this one out and we put in the other one. We go to the other side. We can square our block up here. Doesn't have to be exact, but we doesn't take no effort. All right, we're just taking our our scale here and coming in here to four and a half, right there. We set our travel dial at zero and zero. Okay, if we come over here a quarter inch, we'd put a mark for a visual, and we go over here a quarter inch, and we put another mark. All right, now we come in, we set, we set our dial at zero. We're gonna come in a 32nd of an inch, 32,000, and then hand feed it over to the other mark. Right there. All right, put those chips in the can. All right, and then we just have our paper here. Just taking any of the burrs off that we might have raised up. Okay, bearing's completely finished except for the grease groove in the middle and several holes around here. So alignment is not as critical as you think it or it, it should be. And we don't have to line up a hole with our Zerk fitting or we don't have to drill through uh, uh, an existing hole into the bearing and leave any chips in there. Okay, let's go ahead and Put our Noga in here. You can almost see a little tiny bit of crush, but you just got to be real easy on it. So, <clears throat> okay, we're within a thousandths, and that's close enough for a grease groove. All right, now we're going to do the same thing as we did on the outside, except for we have a radius bit, a little about half of this radius right here. We're going to choose one or the other. Now, the bottom of the grease groove is going to have a radius in it. And we're gonna, it's gonna come up and it's gonna be a sharp edge, but we wanna roll that sharp edge over after we have the grease groove put in there because that's, you want the grease, 
you don't want it to be scraped you want it to be fed into the bearing and by having a rolling edge on it it will roll the grease into and under and in between the bearing and the shaft okay I'm uh, just gonna eyeball half actually we can we can get closer than that if you want uh, 220 okay so you can touch touch the side of that set this at zero and come in 110 and then then you are zero set the travel there okay and we're gonna come on in here four and a half and that is your center and we'll come out making sure nothing's hitting anything come out to touch Boy, it looks it looks deeper than it really is <laughs> um, okay uh, let's just see if that'll sing a lot less with that and what we're gonna do we're gonna come back out to that 32 and we're just going forward Or two and a quarter, two hundred and fifty thousand. Same thing there. Okay, come back out of the hole. That feels good. I like that. Shallow but wide. We'll drill through here several times and we're going to take a flapper wheel and because this radius didn't quite let it get back to square shoulder so it still is like a, a bevel like this and uh, so we can run our, our paper in there and we'll just kind of like roll that so it's just an area where grease can go in and then start feeding its way both ways as as this doesn't rotate it just slides straight back and forth that's it all right let's get the next one in here Everything should be exactly the same. It's within ten thousands. The bearing ODs are within a couple thousands of each other. It, it, it wasn't that far off between the two holes. That we bored in those pieces it would came out really sweet real happy with it okay let's just take a look pretty close to zero pretty close to zero okay Four and a half in. Oh, 
Okay, we just ran a little flapper wheel down in here, deep bird. We put in three holes, just rapid holes here, kind of uh, one that's going to be angled somewhat top dead center. These two will follow off of each side. That's just, the grease is going to come in, the grease comes in at like, oh, 9, 10 o'clock. But it'll still flow through, and then when it enters the inside groove, it'll be entering on somewhat the top of there. So the grease will always be available to the top, even though that's the pressure. And most of the time, the grease is probably going to generate from around the sides. Uh, both of them are ready to go, and we're going to pack these in dry ice now. All right, we just come out from dinner, and we got our micrometer here and also I was just I just kind of wondering um, our bearings are in here and reading like 14 6 degrees 3 2 minus 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 7 minus 11 19 it's kind of fluctuating okay we know that they are cold all right set that up there all right see if I got somewhere underneath the magic number here Let's see if I can reach in here and put my micrometers Okay, that one's down below 11 or 12. It's going to rattle in the hole. Same thing with that one there. Okay, our lines are there for position. And when I had them here, this bearing is for this hole. This bearing is for that hole there. All right, let me get my gloves. We've got our rawhide mallet in case I really have messed up here. And I went ahead and I took out the Zerk fittings and I blew through the opening and I wiped those out with alcohol. And I put a toe clamp with a 3 8 bolt sticking into the bore. So it's going to stop it when it drops down in there. Unless the bolt breaks off and it goes on down. But we got the hydraulic press here in case anything else doesn't go right. All right, here we go. First one. All right, second one. Okay, awesome. This board's just a tiny bit longer. Wonder if I can get a shim, a uh, piece of shim, 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 shim. I got a shim. As long as it doesn't move yet. Okay, got the shim in. At least split the difference. That one's almost flush. Almost flush. A little bit on each side. This this housing must be a little bit longer than that one. Both bearings are exactly the same length. <laughs> Excellent. And the grease grooves are up on the top where they need to be. All right. Okay, and the girls have been begging for the uh, the dry ice so they could go make their witch's brew. They've grabbed. All right. cool that's satisfying tomorrow we'll uh, mic up the bores and see if we we're able to hold that tolerance we were looking for without having to machine them again mm -hmm.